Welcome back. Today we will be covering accurate measurement of blood pressure. Before we cover blood pressure measurement, I would like to introduce Dr. Suzanne Hilton. Dr. Hilton is a primary care provider at Total Family Care in Winston-Salem. She is also a regional medical director and our Measure Up Pressure Down provider champion. Dr. Hilton is going to talk with you for a couple of minutes about the Measure Up Pressure Down campaign that Cornerstone is participating in. Measure Up Pressure Down is a three-year campaign sponsored by the American Medical Group Foundation. This campaign was undertaken in an effort to improve blood pressure control. In addition to our participation, many other leading health organizations are taking on the Measure Up Pressure Down Challenge. Over the next three years, we will work together to achieve the campaign goal of helping 80% of our adult hypertensive patients reach blood pressure control. Our mission at Cornerstone is to be your medical home. So our goal, along with the campaign, will be to engage and empower patients to actively manage their health. Cornerstone is a member of the American Medical Group Association and we will be helping AMGA achieve their goal by adopting all of the campaign planks. The campaign planks are steps that will help us reach the three-year campaign goal to get 80% of our adult hypertensive patients at goal with blood pressure. Through this video and competency training for clinical staff on blood pressure measurement, we will be working to implement two of these planks. The other planks, such as hypertension guidelines and patient engagement and self-management, are being worked on by multidisciplinary work groups, both of which I am involved in. Work groups bring together and are facilitated by our physician expertise, frontline staff experience, and patient perspectives in both primary and specialty care. Measure Up Pressure Down has a campaign website that you can visit if you'd like to learn more about the overall campaign. For the time being, enjoy learning about blood pressure measurement and be on the lookout for more information that is coming from the work groups. Thank you. So I know what you are probably thinking. Great, now I know that this is a national campaign and I already know how to take a blood pressure. So why do I have to sit through this training? One word can be used to answer that question, variation. When we started this campaign, we surveyed clinical staff on blood pressure measurement. We found that there was variation in whether every clinical team member obtained blood pressure the same way, and variation in the device used to obtain the blood pressure. We also asked directly how you respond to a high reading, and we got some good responses. But then, when we asked which arm you measure blood pressure in, we saw that there's a lot of variability in responses. Finally, we asked what would help the clinical team member feel more confident about taking blood pressure. And that is the focus of this training. Let's start by defining blood pressure. Your heart pumps blood into arteries with each beat, and the amount of force it uses to pump is measured. The first and higher of the two measures is systolic pressure, the second is diastolic. Normal blood pressure is about 120 over 80. What we know is that hypertension is common, silent, dangerous, and treatable. We've defined blood pressure, so what is hypertension? At Cornerstone, we follow this chart to classify blood pressures. As you see, 140 to 159 systolic or 90 to 99 diastolic is high. Please know that hypertension is not diagnosed after one blood pressure reading. There are many health risks associated with uncontrolled hypertension. Some of those include cardiovascular disease, heart failure, and stroke. One thing we must consider is the impact of the physical location on the blood pressure. And what we're referring to here is the office versus the home blood pressure. So what is the impact of where you take your blood pressure? 
Well, we know there's a difference between blood pressure readings throughout the day, depending on where you are. Blood pressure remains fairly steady throughout the daytime hours, it declines in the evening at home, drops another 10 to 20% when sleeping. In a physician's office, it is notably and consistently higher than that of your daytime blood pressure. Throughout this video, we will stress the importance of measuring blood pressure in both arms. Treatment decisions are based on the highest reading. Blood pressures can vary in each arm. So at a minimum, take bilateral blood pressures when there is a question about a reading, the patient is establishing with the office, or bilateral pressures have never been recorded. White coat hypertension is something that we need to be aware of. It can raise blood pressure by 10 to 20 millimeters of mercury in up to 49% of patients. Additionally, nearly 20% of patients diagnosed with hypertension based on readings are not hypertensive. White coat hypertension is impossible to diagnose on readings alone. Also, it's more pronounced in the elderly and it's greater in women than in men. When thinking about blood pressure measurement, it's really important that we prepare to obtain it. Selecting the right cuff size for the patient is critical. If you are unsure of the patient's arm circumference, then you should measure it. This also highlights that there are varying sizes in blood pressure cuffs, just as there are varying sizes in people. One size does not fit all. In the survey, we found that there was variation in the device used to measure blood pressures. Manual devices requires technique that involves skill mastery. Automated devices minimize human error or observer bias. Please know that either way is valid to obtain blood pressure. If the device is properly maintained, if the device is calibrated, and if a competent observer obtains the blood pressure measurement. We are all human and we all make mistakes. So we're going to take a minute to cover some common mistakes with blood pressure measurement. One is inappropriate cuff size. And then we have inappropriate bladder size. We also have failure to allow rest before measurement and failure to measure in both arms. The final one's kind of tricky. It's complicated, but a recommendation is before listening for a blood pressure, you should have one hand on the radial artery, say like you're counting a pulse, then you would inflate the blood pressure cuff until you can no longer feel that pulse. Look at the number on the measurement dial, then release the cuff down. The maximal systolic pressure is that number plus 30 millimeters of mercury. That is what level you should inflate the manual blood pressure cuff to so that you do not miss the first Karatikov sound. When we think about common mistakes, we also must look at factors that interfere with accurate blood pressure measurement. So some factors that interfere with blood pressure measurement is the patient laying down rather than sitting, the position of the patient's arm, failure to support the arm, and the fact that the cuff may be too small. Other factors that can interfere with the accuracy of blood pressure measurement are expectation bias, talking, acute exposure to cold, and acute ingestion of alcohol. Let's talk about another factor that can influence blood pressure measurement, feet flat versus legs crossed. Blood pressure can be significantly higher when legs are crossed. It can impact the systolic pressure by 5 to 6 millimeters of mercury and the diastolic by 2 to 3 millimeters of mercury. Having the feet flat on the floor can contribute to accurate measurement, accurate interpretation, and proper treatment of the patient's health. Are you surprised? Feet flat does not mean the same thing for every person. Having the legs crossed, even if the feet are flat on the ground, will still increase the blood pressure. So ensure that feet are flat and the legs are uncrossed. Now that you've prepared for the blood pressure measurement, let's talk about actually obtaining one. In order to obtain accurate blood pressure measurements, we must ensure that the patient has avoided smoking or caffeine for at least one hour prior to measurement. We must place the cuff at the heart level. We must also ensure that the cuff index line is within two markers. We must also make sure that the cuff is tight, but allow two fingers to be inserted between the cuff and the arm. We want to make sure that the back and the arm are supported. There it goes again. Feet are flat on the floor with the legs uncrossed. 
We also want to avoid talking, and we want to measure blood pressure in both arms. An important factor for accurate blood pressure measurement is the placement of the cuff. The first thing we want to do is make sure that we've selected the appropriate cuff size and position it correctly on the patient's arm. We also want to ensure that the cuff is level with the heart. For manual blood pressures, we want to ensure that the stethoscope is clear of the cuff. Finally, the cuff must be placed on a bare arm, not over clothing. So now we've learned the important considerations for taking an accurate blood pressure measurement. Let's watch a video on how we should not be taking blood pressure at Cornerstone. Hi, Miss Susan. How are you today? Hey, I'm good today. How, how are, are you? you? I'm good. I'm doing well. I hope you are. I'm going to get my blood pressure checked. Yes, we're going to get your blood pressure today. And the now, let me just tell you, I've got some pictures to Oh, show. you've got some pictures My children, me? yes, I want you to see oh, them. Oh, yes, you've got to show me your pictures. What yes, pictures you got today? Yes, let me I see. Have. Pictures. What yes, pictures you got today? Yes, let me I see. I have my children. I want you to look. Yeah, this let is me my see. son and his girlfriend. I okay. just wanted to tell you about yeah. them. And the grand dogs. I have two grand dogs. Yeah. Yes, and they're they pretty. Oh, they're I'm gorgeous. So proud of well, them. let me go grab Mary and let her see your pictures okay, too. Okay, that'd be good. I'd well, like to show them Mary, come in here, girl. Won't you see Miss Susan's pictures? Hey, Miss Susan. Look. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? you? I'm doing well. I wanted you to see. I like. Uh oh, you don't have to worry about that. It'll be all right. Oh, good. Yeah. It'll still take my blood pressure. Yeah, yeah. it'll still take. These it. are my children. I just oh, wanted to show I them love to them. you. Them. Yeah. Aren't I they beautiful? They are. I just think they're gorgeous. They are. I'm so proud of them, and I have two granddaughters. Oh, good. Yes. Cooper and Molly. I'm all back, Miss Susan. All right, there. Uh-oh. What do we have she's, here? I think well, she's good. Oh, your blood pressure's okay. Uh, Now that we've seen how the blood pressure is obtained the wrong way, let's look at how the blood pressure should be obtained the right way. So let's review, how'd you do? In the first video, we saw that there were legs crossed, feet were not flat on the ground, the patient and the observer were talking, the observer left the room, they had the wrong size cuff, the cuff was placed over the clothes, blood pressure didn't record, and we lied to the patient. In the second video, blood pressure should be the last thing that you do. The feet were flat on the floor with legs uncrossed. We asked questions that impact blood pressure measurement. We had the right size cuff. It was taken on a bare arm. The arm was supported and the observer did not leave the room. Remember, faulty technique equals faulty measurement. 
In obtaining accurate measurement, we must be aware of observer bias. One is digit preference, where we record round numbers as a terminal digit of any reading. The most common terminal digit is zero. Multiple readings over several minutes. We tend to record similar readings. But to the trained observer, we will actually notice variation over those blood pressure readings over several minutes. So the ones in red are ones that we want to avoid. The goal is to minimize bias, record what you hear, not what you perceive. So after blood pressure measurement, we want to make sure that we document the blood pressure. Document the arm that you measured it in and follow your office's procedure for notification of blood pressure reading. So now we've covered some important topics in blood pressure measurement. Let's go over some key points. If nothing else, remember to be consistent and always follow appropriate measurement protocol. And this is not correct placement of a blood pressure cuff. We hope that you enjoyed learning. Pictured are the blood pressure measurement workgroup members who played an important part in the development of this video training program. I'd like to take a moment and acknowledge and thank the practices who allotted time for their clinical staff members to participate on the blood pressure measurement workgroup. So thank you Cornerstone Care Outreach Clinic, Cornerstone Family Medicine at Archdale, Cornerstone Internal Medicine at Westchester, Cornerstone Nephrology, Piedmont Center Family Medicine, and Piedmont Internal Medicine. That's it for blood pressure measurement. We look forward to seeing you in the practice and know that clinical staff members will be signed off on their competency for blood pressure measurement.